Rena Shaw. Rena, good to have you on this afternoon. Hi. So, Rena, to the politics for a moment here. You have the former president and current candidate for president in a, in a criminal courtroom on the 15th floor of the building behind me. Uh, folks who were very close to him, David Pecker, uh, among them testifying that this was a, a pattern of buying stories, uh, including about alleged affairs, uh, to help the president, publishing stories critical of his opponents, including Republican opponents here. Is this good for the former president? You know, I think looking at it on its face today, Jim, what the details that we're getting out of this case are rather salacious in nature. I mean, many of these things were known, yeah. but what we've learned so far has really confirmed to us the rumors that were there in 2016 about just how Trump and his associates went about getting that favorable coverage, about suppressing the negativity that could have been coming for him from whatever direction, and also about what was planted about his opponents, a former, you know, again, who was also running into the 2016 election. Current Senator Ted Cruz, current Senator Marco Rubio. These are former opponents of Trump's who, again, who now support him. Uh, but what we're looking at here is something far more than just a hush money case that was about a dalliance between a merry rich man and a pornography actress. This was about, again, really wanting to influence the outcome of the 2016 election by suppressing negative information. You heard the president, the former president, as he left there, again allege that this is all politics. Uh, this is about hurting him as a candidate. You, I wonder how that argument lands with his supporters and perhaps any undecided Republican voters as compared to what you're describing there, which are, which are the details of sordid alleged affairs as well as a sordid effort to boost his campaign, uh, to, to, to pay off and catch and kill stories that were negative to him. How do those balance out in, in the minds of voters, particularly Republican voters, in your view? Well, the number one question is always who's watching and how much are they watching? And then what impression does this leave on the minds of those voters who have felt that it's right for a former president to be held accountable, to be in a court? I mean, of course, we're in an incredible moment in history. It's been said many times over just to see an ex-president, an American president sitting in a court uh, facing criminal charges with this trial underway does yeah. feel as if it demands everybody's attention. But those voters who are more moderate Republicans have felt uh, not like those who are on the fringes, that this is a weaponization of the justice system, that this is an unfair targeting of Trump. They want to see how it plays out. And when we talk about how this plays out, I think we have to talk about the outcome, which we'll get, of course, weeks from now is what we're expecting. But we should think about the long game because that's what Trump does. He knows that every day that he, question, he get, puts the question in the minds of voters about the veracity of these charges against him is a day in which he has the potential to change their minds, Jim. Yeah. Listen, I mean, he has every right to defend himself, both in court and, and in public, uh, as long as, in the judge's view, that defense does not involve attacking jurors or witnesses. But with each of these opportunities, as he makes it about himself, he does have opportunities to present plans for a second term, policies to, for instance, address inflation. He was talking about inflation there, or, or policies to address the war in the Middle East, uh, as opposed to claiming that none of this would have happened somehow if he were president. Is he missing opportunities to lay out a positive plan for a second term, as opposed to uh, really lean into this, he's a victim messaging? Well, he's been pulling that victim card for so many years, as we know, which is something that doesn't jive with traditional Republicans. But what you call right now is a party that is very much still Trump's party. So on the one hand, to the everyday observer, Trump is yelling election interference, saying that this case and the other indictments against him, the three other cases in other jurisdictions are all election interference. And yet at the core of this case in New York is 
election interference, the allegations that he played unfairly in 2016. The important part, I think, to divorce from all of this is, again, the ability that he could have and is missing to walk and chew gum at the same time, to really lay forth a more positive vision for this Republican Party. I see this past week, it seems his influence is dwindling in those areas in which he could have a positive imprint. He didn't get through to Speaker Johnson, who put foreign aid on the floor and passed it in the House chamber against Trump and MAGA wishes. So uh -huh. he could go into other areas that other Americans deem very important and necessary issues, economy, crime, public safety, immigration. Yet he takes the bait and goes for the lowest line fruit, which is to, again, appeal to the emotions of voters while crying victim. Rena Shaw, thanks so much for sharing your point of view. Thank you, Jim.